Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So, Mr. Puffy has a very congested nose. He's mucousy. And it's the holiday and I can't really get the culture done. Uh, so, just... To be on the safe side, I'm going to give him a nebulizer treatment with uh, some Fortaz uh, antibiotic uh, and see if we can uh, help him out. Now, of course, he isn't going to like this uh, because I'm going to be sticking this nebulizer in his face. I do have a nebulizer box set up. However, uh, you know, I don't want to stress him any more than he's already stressed. Uh, so I'm going to do this uh, uh, <laughs> just by sort of sticking this in his face, which won't go over very well either. Uh, but this is safe for him, safe for me, because I don't have to handle a puff adder on the holidays. Um, and uh, gets the job done. <clears throat> now, I used to take to actually restraining the animal and injecting them uh, but I found this to be counterproductive because it was very stressful for the animal and it was uh, also dangerous for me and since I don't like holding animals unless it's absolutely necessary we resort to nebulizing which he probably won't like anyway uh, but it gets the job done come on breathe it in dude you got it. Yeah, he just took a nice big breath. And probably the the mist is maybe nice uh, to moisten his mucous membranes. And uh, this way he'll get antibiotic in him. Uh, exactly where the problem is. Uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> I uh, won't have to. Oh, you're gonna go, you saw my hand move, huh? Come on, this doesn't work so well when tilted. Well, actually, it seems to work in all angles, which is good. Come on, dude. This is one time when we want you to hop and puff. Yep, you got to get it in uh, for it to do some good. Now we, we'll do this every 72 hours. I find that uh, a lot of the instructions in various books, no matter how good the, the book may be. Um, I find that I may win the battle by killing uh, the infection off, but uh, antibiotics and reptiles uh, is a little different uh, dosing because they're metabolically slower, and I think it builds up in their organs and uh, causes renal and liver failure. So, uh, I prefer to do a lower dose uh, over a longer period of time. Hi, dude. Yeah. yeah. See, this is the hand he really wants to get a hold of. <laughs> <laughs> so, his dose is 0.3 ml of the antibiotic which doses him at about 25 milligrams per kilogram. And I put it in a couple mLs of distilled water uh, for the nebulizing treatment. And it's mostly done. 
so. taking a few really good breaths, which is very good. Yep, and you know the mist is moistening his lips. He's probably going to get some on his lips and into his uh, throat and stuff, uh, which isn't going to hurt him. Although I imagine the antibiotic uh, tastes rather bitter uh, if they have taste uh, buds that are similar to humans. So. Uh, that'll hold Mr. Puffy for 72 hours, and then we'll give him uh, another dose and see how he does. I've also raised his temperature. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like humans, your body gets a temperature when you're sick, and that's because your body is trying to make the environment unfavorable for that bacteria to thrive. Uh, so we raised his temperature to about 33 Celsius. Uh, and we'll hopefully uh, have some results in a couple days. Alright, uh, continuing on with the uh, mundane things that we do in the lair. Uh, these Russell's Vipers uh, uh, need a little bit of a, a housekeeping. Uh, they haven't had a substrate change in a while, so that's going to do. You can see that she's all happy to see me. <laughs> Come on. So these are the same batch that were uh, you saw across the way. I think we, uh, we filmed that. Um, these are the ones that did really well. Uh, throughout their uh, their tiny uh, newborn period, and such beautiful sheds. I mean, these sheds really retain the pattern very nicely, and uh, but uh, you know, I have so many of them. Stop pushing against the lid, you little brat. So many of I get so many sheds that I just sort of have to toss them out. Um, somewhere in here is a uh, scraper. Paint oh. scraper, right there. There it is. Oop, I can't reach it. Would you please? Thanks. Um, and Lori doesn't really have the time, and they're. Those sheds are a little tough to make into jewelry, and Lori has spent quite a bit of time into making some nice pendants and stuff out of it. But um, you know, Lori's time is valuable, and the supplies have to be bought. Um, and you know. No one wants to buy it for a fair price, so <laughs> we just don't even bother now. Uh, the reptile community is so freaking cheap, unless of course you want to spend $1,500 for a dumb blue cystic uh, cobra or a ball python. Um, to have a nice piece of jewelry to wear with uh, very unique uh, characteristics. You know, people won't spend 20 bucks for that. Uh, I find it very annoying. Alright, so, we have some fresh substrate. We have something to rub on again for shedding purposes. And we have a water dish. And we have a very angry <laughs> Russell's Viper uh, that needs to come out. Guys, are, their next move is into a full-size cage. As you can really see, they are very beautiful. These are Pakistani. These are different uh, colorations than one would find in India. Uh, certainly very different from the Southeast Asia ones that would be found in Burma uh, or Thailand. Um, <clears throat> the other variety Oh, of Russell Swipers um, that you would find. Oh, you're hungry. Okay, this is not feeding though. 
feeding will come later after cleaning. Um, there's some Indonesian varieties of Russell's Vipers that are found on the Lesser Sunda Islands. Um, oh, now we're really upset. <laughs> um, and that was a perfect example of why I use hooks to open cages. Uh, unless I am going to demonstrate uh, almost getting bit. <laughs> Um, and you saw her strike from the back of the cage to right about here uh, when the cage was open. So uh, fingers and stuff uh, you don't want to have in the way. Uh, you can see plenty of examples of close uh, uh, calls, you know, near misses, um, you know, on the intro to my Viper Keeper videos. Um, uh, you know, I, I used to do that quite commonly, but most of that was just uh, uh, because that's what people really like to see. They don't like to see this uh, relatively routine stuff, cleaning cages. They like to see people almost getting bit and such. Um, so, you know, you sort of have to make a dramatic... Uh, uh, video in order to have lots of likes and lots of, uh, of views and stuff and um, I was much younger then and uh, um, a little bit more daring. Uh, I don't need to do that anymore. So same deal. The only thing that's missing from here is the Russell's Viper, which we'll move next. Okay. Uh, you also note that I have the very delicate, very trusty uh, gripper uh, from Midwest Tongues. Uh, this has a very light touch, which you need uh, for, you know, smaller animals. Uh, we have the really big ones for, uh, you know, the bigger snakes. The grippers, the tongues, are all worst case scenario, last resort sort of devices, uh, simply because uh, the snakes really freak out. So we only use it when necessary on snakes that have already freaked out. <laughs> um, this way we're not causing them to freak out, we're just uh, showing them that we can even make them freak out worse. Hello? Oh, I, you're expecting food. You know, that's part of the problem. You know, you come visit these snakes to give them food and water and uh, they really don't expect being disturbed uh, and uh, their cage maintained. There you go. Well, that was rather nice of you to, uh, to sit there and not uh, necessarily go crazy. Um, you know, snake hockey happens, but you don't want it to happen. Again, this is just spot cleaning. They're going back into their same container. There isn't any moist, wet, you know, crud that can attract flies. So there's no reason to uh, absolutely scrub the bin clean, um, which is a good thing because we have a lot of bins to clean if that was the case. substrate. Now these guys being from Pakistan, I keep them dry whereas the Brussels Vipers from India and Thailand, they're used to a, you know, a lot of water. 
because the the Russell's Vipers in India pretty much are around rice paddies where there's water because you know the, the rice is submerged in water to grow and uh, you know and in Thailand that's very tropical and they get lots of rainfall so those guys you know are used to having uh, a reasonable amount of wetness so uh, they get kept on the very dry side uh, this is the most moisture that they're going to get other than, you know, having water in their water dish. Uh, just so they, uh, they can, uh, this will we'll let this dry out. They'll have a little bit of humidity. This is uh, yeah, rather relaxed uh, for the moment, but this can all go to hell in a handbasket uh, reasonably quick. Hello. Um, no, we're not coming up the hook. We've already had this discussion previously <laughs> that snakes going up hooks is a very bad thing. Well, she seems to be taking this fairly well. Hello. So, we're going to put you back in there, girly. Oh, I'm sorry, guy. Oh, this is why he's so relaxed. He's a guy snake. Uh, we know that female snakes are just like uh, hell on wheels. That happens to be a boy, so that's why he was pretty easy going about the whole thing. Uh, it's just something about females, doesn't matter what the species is, but holy cow, watch out. Hello. There we go. Now, if you be a nice guy and you just sort of rest there, I'll leave the lid off, so... Mrs. Viper Keeper has something to film other than me blabbing away. Okay, so we'll clean this cage and we'll keep one eye on him. <clears throat> Russell's Vipers are certainly most deadly, uh, one of the two or three most deadly snakes on the planet to humans. Um, you know, again, we have this conversation often. Oh, what is the most venomous snake? Well, uh, for me, it's the one that just bit you because that's the only one that really matters because uh, uh, all the rest are, are not doing you any harm. But, in reality, Russell's Vipers and Sawscale Vipers kill the most people on the planet and do the most biting of all the other venomous snakes put together. Yes, Taipans, especially the Inland Taipan, may have the most toxic venom drop for drop as far as mice are concerned. Remember, all these uh, lethal dose studies are done in mice, not in humans, although I certainly can think of lots of humans we can uh, experiment on. Uh, so, it's, it's a fact that the inland taipan, even though it's the most toxic, has never killed anybody that anyone is aware of, simply because it's in a place where it doesn't do any biting, really, except on rats, which is what it's designed to do. Uh, whereas Russell's vipers, you know, they're right in agricultural areas, in uh, parts of the world where, you know, farmers are barefooted, they reach into the grass, they step on them. These are very foul, like any other snake. Snakes don't like to be stepped on, just like you don't like to be stepped on. So they do a lot of biting. Same thing with saw scale vipers. They're very common. Uh, they're, they crawl into your tents after food. They're in your carpet, hence the word carpet viper. Um, these are the oh, whoa, 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 whoa. most lethal snakes on the planet. Now, didn't I tell you that this anything could go wrong at any any time, and this is why we have the freaked out snake stick here. My, are we wacky, huh? Okay, dude. 
Oh, lots of venom on that. Look at that. Yikes. And we saw it squirt even. We don't want that in our skin. My. This shows you everything can be going perfectly smoothly, routinely, and all of a sudden it goes and has a major conflagration. Um, this is the nature of working with venomous snakes. Anything can happen at any moment. Um, what can I say? I mean, this is the way things go with venomous snakes. That's why you sort of have to have things prepared for when things go off the rails because it, it really will, and that was a fine demonstration of it going off the rails. So that's all with the cleaning of the Russell's Vipers, and we ended it in spectacular fashion. Boy, oh boy, it looked like it landed in your lap. Uh, yeah, pretty close. Uh, but you know, it was it was an escape. So it could have landed in my lap or on my leg. We'll have to look at the videotape uh, and decided, well, okay, nothing's trying to restrain me. Uh, I'm just going to continue with the escape, so I'm not going to bite. You saw that it only started to bite when I used the uh, grab stick uh, because if you think, just make believe you're a snake. Those jaws on the grab stick, the snake thinks, oh my god, something's bitten me on my back and is trying to kill me. So it responds in an appropriate fashion. It freaks out more than it's already been freaked out. That's why it's the tool of last resort here at the lair. Um, I only use it, you know, when the snake elevates the situation to the point I have no option to control it. End of story. So this is pretty, uh, it be some pretty cool video, I think. Well, I hope I got it in, uh, in the camera. I was more interested in that point of watching the snake to make sure you know, I wasn't going to be needed to help or get out of the way, so yep. I don't know if it was actually, you know, on camera or not, which, in which case, I apologize. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, there used to be a point in the Viper Keeper video career where I used to do all the camera work myself, as well as uh, work crazy snakes in bad situations like that. Um, the first thing that, you know, as a camera person, your responsibility is to stay safe, keep your eye on the snake, and stay out of uh, the way when things go bad. Your second job, of course, is videographer. Um, that's a secondary position. Uh, if you got it, you got it. If you didn't, no big deal. Uh, there was plenty of action once I had it grabbed. This is true. <laughs> okay. <laughs>